Hello, I'm Vince with JR Smith, and today I'm going to go over on how to assemble a carrier and some of the tricks to the trade, along with um, some of the settings that you need to be aware of. You're going to have three basically pieces that are going to come in with two boxes and the carrier. This is the carrier body, which we're going to have in the first box is what we call is the nipple kit assembly, which is going to come with basically our thread protectors, our studs, our nipple, our O-ring, our petroleum jelly for the o-ring and nipple and then also our um, styrofoam um, concrete sleeve for the nipple. I went ahead for these other three I went ahead and pre-assembled which the bolt the nuts will actually come in our next box that will open but but I will get to that when actually we get to that uh, next box. But once we open it up I like to go ahead and just put the thread protectors on the nipple. Um, pretty simple to do and at that point in time I do them for all three at the time then I'd move on to the next box and when I open the box up I'd actually take the finished trim kit out I go ahead and put it over with the the nipple protector the styrofoam we got our gasket which is goes between our 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 trim plate and our carrier body and just set that to the side and then we have our four bolts that attach the the face plate to the carrier body which I'll put that to the side and then we'd actually have at this point in time we'd have eight um, nuts and at that time I'd take the nuts and go ahead and put them on the studs just for that point. Now when you're putting the nuts on the studs you want to make sure one side's going to be longer than the other. So when we put this stud together I have this much room so when we go through the carrier body we're actually hanging out of the carrier body which makes for a better installation and there's no chance of it being in here and come pulling out. Once we have that all done the three tools that we would actually need is a 2x4 which is right here and I'll show you why we use that. Basically we use the impact wrench with a three-quarter drive you could do that with just basically a socket set if you needed to on the job site. This just makes it real fast for an install. I like a flathead screwdriver thin and what I do is I use that just to basically pull out our um, our thread protector in there and there's only one of them in there because the other ones are, were actually filled with grease. So at that point in time I just go ahead and flip this over go ahead and pull out the the thread protector which is pretty easily removed. Just go ahead and throw that there. I'll take our gasket Go ahead and put it on there. I line it up. Um, just make sure that we're all lined up. Makes it easier. So actually, when we saw the install the face plate, just so that you can see here, is we just want to make sure that the Smith is facing that we can read it, not upside down, and also the vent is here. The only reason I bring this up is I've seen these installed backwards before and had to actually have somebody go back and put it together. So at that point in time, with our two by four and how it is, I just go ahead and put it on the wall, line it up. And then what I'll do is, is I just take my first bolt in here, and I like with my impact wrench just as I just do the first, get the first one started, and then the next ones will go real easy to start. And I set the impact wrench at a low torque rating, so if there's ever an issue, well, when they actually have to set it, and um, do the adjustments in the field to the final floor because you know the concrete's always not even. It just makes it pretty simple for them to do. So we just tighten it all the way down. And then what we'll do is, and basically we've got the, the finished the plate on. And at this point in time, we go ahead and move and attach the studs to the face plate. which just takes a little bit of time but it's not that that hard. Now why I touch these, attach these to the faceplate, um, one of the biggest issues I see out there is, is that everybody f forgets the backing um, washer when they're installing these when they're actually coming to set their toilet. And they'll do is they'll just set this up against the wall without the backing washer and then you crush your tile, break your um, toilet, or, or hurt your drywall. Um, I'll show you the backing washer here in one second after I have this done but that's a it's a very important piece when you're actually installing your toilet.
toilet at finish at the finish time. And this is all that your backing washer is, is right here. Just the backing washers right here. And it's just going to go ahead and come in here. Say if we were here on our outlet, we just have this nut go all the way down. The washer goes in front and then we just do our finish bolts on top of it to hold the toilet in place. So that's where that's one of the biggest issues that we actually see that I see when I'm out there in the field. Now the next one is, is that we take our O-ring, we lubricate it. And I always like to make sure that we lubricate it. I already lubricated it once, but you'd make sure that you have really good lubrication on this. And then you just install it into the body of the faceplate. There's that ring. And if as long as we have enough lubrication and we have enough lubrication on our nipple, this makes a good seal. So when you're actually coming to do your pressure test, this will just seal right up for you. Makes your life very easy when you're doing your pressure test. Now, a couple of the other tricks that we actually have that I've seen um, is there is that at five and a quarter inches set on the leg length that we have, that'll give you 16 inches on your non-ADA toilet heights. And then seven and a quarter for your 18 inches on your ADA height. The issue happens is, is that normally some people don't take into account or consideration of what the flooring is going to be. And normally that's a quarter inch to a half inch. So a lot of the, lot of the guys just to save for the sake of time, they'll go ahead and set the, the legs at five and a half and for the non-ADA and seven and a half for the ADA. And that'll take in consideration basically a quarter inch for your tile, which is kind of standard. And then they can adjust from there. Um, hopefully this uh, video was informational and informative for you, um, and we appreciate all the support for J.R. Smith. Thank you.